Good, good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Dice Tower. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Hello. And I'm the pod father of gaming, Stephen Bonacore. Hey, this is our 100th episode live. We're not doing anything special at all. What do you mean? <laughs> Look at that shirt Bonacore's wearing. That's special, baby. This is a special shirt. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now there this will be my... a special dance interlude in today's episode. Woo-hoo! Flamenco! Roof, <laughs> As a side note here, folks, if you participated... In the Jack Bass Memorial Fund auction on Board Game Geek, we raised over fifty-five thousand dollars for that fund, and I really want to say thank you for that. Not only that, but there's been a slew. I mean, it's not. It's kind of weird to say it's good or bad. There's been a slew of people applying for the fund lately. We've been able to help a lot of people, so it's not good that they need to apply, but it's good that we can help them. Sure, absolutely. Yes, thank yes, you. Yes. Everybody who uh, who bid in the auction, and of course, if you can donate money too, there's the link right there that you can uh, you can send yeah, the money directly. Dot org. So it's spring. The spring spectacular is over. We are back. Um, the weather is still beautiful down here. I, it actually feels like spring still. It usually feels like summer at this point. It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um, so that's exciting. I, I feel hope for the rest of the year. Things are looking up. And uh, what better way to start then is with a good board game breakfast. So let's start with some contributors and we'll be back with the news. Pardon me, madam. Might you have any underbutlers? Yes. Oh, very good. Folks, I have a little confession to make. See, I can be a little picky about the themes of games I like to play. So when my friends reached out online and said, we should play Obsession, I was like, hey, that sounds kind of terrible. What else you got? And they were like, no, it's about managing this wealthy estate in Victorian England. And I was like, actually, that sounds even worse. But we played it. And guess what? I hated it. It took forever, and I couldn't wait for it to be over. But when we were done, I kind of kept thinking about it. I was thinking of all the different mechanisms, the cards with all the characters, and the workers with the little meeples. I couldn't get it out of my head. I kind of wanted to play it again. I guess you could say I was obsessed. No, 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 no. I'm not having this not on my channel. No dad jokes. Nuh-uh. Not doing it. Obsessed. I said no. Obsession, designed by Dan Halligan of Kienta Games, is kind of like your appetizer sampler at your local favorite restaurant. It's a variety of ideas on a single plate. You'll find elements of deck building, city building, and worker placement. Most of the time you'll use these tiles, representing rooms or features of your family estate, to host a party of sorts, welcoming guests that you've met throughout the game. Some tiles will require staff members to assist, while certain guests will also require specific servants before they'll attend. In the end, your final score will combine the value of the upgrades you've slotted into your estate, the value of the guests you've met along the way, your final reputation, the value of your staff, and how well you've managed to attract the attention of the romantically motivated Fairchilds. Now, Obsession is sold out worldwide, with only a few copies left available here in the U.S. However, I reached out to designer Dan Halligan, who said that 20,000 more copies of the game will become available in July of this year. Until then, I fathom you'll need another way to take the egg, I suppose. Mmm, jolly good. Hi, everybody. Hello, we are Ryan and Bethany. From Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we're talking about Viscounts of the West Kingdom. This is the third in the West Kingdom line of games. Um, honestly, we had a great time with this one. Uh, basically, the theme, I don't even want to tell you the theme because it doesn't matter. It's the only downside. <laughs> <laughs> you're a, a, a good little dude walking around on the table. You're a big dude walking around the You're a big dude walking around the table doing actions, collecting points. There's multiple paths to victory. I like that part a lot. Um, but the theme is, wouldn't, if I told you, it wouldn't even help you, so I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, Ryan has a lot of contention with that when it it comes to that. I read the back of the box like, this sounds really epic. Like, political intrigue, all this stuff going on. It doesn't doesn't even show up. (laughs) (laughs) I really enjoyed this one. I felt like it was different than the rest of the games, but still had that fun, just like, 
worker placement, tableau management. I don't know. I don't know. It was fun. I really liked it. I really liked, like Ryan said, that there were multiple paths to victory. And we know because we tested them. We tried them out to prove that there were multiple <laughs> paths to victory. They were all viable. And they were. But you can't do all of them. Because if you do all of them at the same time, then none of them are viable. True. Yeah. Uh, I would call this, like, has deck building elements, but it's not a deck builder. Yeah. You have, like, a little deck of cards, and you're adding one or two here or there, and you're just, you know, getting rid of one or two here or there. But it's more of, like, a hand management, like you said, tableau building yeah. kind of a thing that is, like, a true deck builder. But I like how they just use that little element as the way to kind of get actions happening. Yeah, it was really fun, and I really enjoyed it. I see this um, not leaving our collection at all. Mm -mm. All right, you guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see more from us, we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. You can find us on Facebook or on YouTube. Everybody, this is Ryan. I'm Bethany. Hoping you have a happy, healthy breakfast. Bye, Bye guys. All right, folks, welcome to the Dice Tower News as we take a look at stuff that is happening in the business. Now, a lot of big announcements have been made in previous weeks, so now we're down to just basically some new game announcements, or in the case of the first piece of news, an expansion for Marvel Champions, and this is Venom, or Agent Venom. I, uh, Venom has been is working for the U.S. government now, so he's trying to be good, even though internally he's bad. Oh, my. Very conflicted. Very yeah, it's actually not a bad series. I, I enjoyed him in this role. Venom being just bad is fine, but I kind of like the mixed. He's almost, I mean, even for these pictures, it doesn't look too far off from being the Punisher, right? You know, with all the yeah, guys. Yeah, I get a vibe of, uh, like, Spawn from these. Even That's from true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, if you're interested in this, it's coming out soon. I mean, they're just pumping these things out. Marvel one Champion. a month, Marvel. right? Like these releases, some something comes out one a month, right? Yeah, I think so. And Marvel's just a hot IP at the moment. There's a lot of games are using it. We'll see if people get tired of it. I know, I know, some of you already are, but whatever. Mm -hmm. All right, now let's go to Never. a beautiful looking game called Botanic, or is it Botanic? So when I saw this, I, I literally, as I was, like as I was scrolling through this to to talk intelligently i saw this i said is this thing about botox treatments i really thought with the way that ah! his face is like his shape i'm like like botox what and then i read it yes it's about well, my botany. question is does she have four eyes because no, no four if, arms i <laughs> right and if, well, if yeah. she doesn't have four arms and if you take those glasses off that is a gigantic forward oh you wouldn't notice that but wow. that that big forward is not common on most people. <laughs> uh, receiving well, the hair four arms, arms, though, perfectly normal. Let's agree that this is not the most beautiful piece of art that we've ever seen in our lives. We'll go from yeah, that. it's coming from Space Cowboys, and usually they have pretty slam dunk art. Um, yeah. The game itself doesn't even look that interesting, you know? It looks like that... Do you remember that game that Dale Yu made that uh, Mattel put Vol out a while Voltage? ago? Yeah, it looks a little like that almost. Yeah. Anyway, this is a reworking. They, they announced this game originally a long time ago uh, when um, Space Cowboys was going to re-release Jaipur. They announced three games all at once. All three had very similar names. All three had very similar themes. Two of them have come out. Jaipur was the first, and then they put out another one with had these, which had this tile stacking thing. And then this one, they were like, okay, well, this is way too similar to Jaipur. So they went back to the drawing board and renamed it, rethemed it, and now it's going to be coming out. So that's what this is. It's interesting that this this looks like a much lighter, uninvolved game for Space Cowboys, which I always think of as being a company that makes bigger, bigger games, more involved. You no, know, this is like Jaipur, though. I'm I'm much more interested in it, though. Z. It's from the same people. Um, I'm very touch. I'm I'm very hit and miss on on this trio of designers i'll be honest with you the the there's a couple of them i like and a lot of them i've been disappointed by my for me personally i don't have high hopes for this which is unfortunate but honestly i don't all right well we've already alluded to the fact that the 20th anniversary edition of carcassonne's coming out this summer it's going to look really pretty as far as i can tell you even have stickers you can put on the meeples and so on and so forth and it also looks like they're going to be re-releasing some of the expansions for it. 
I don't know if these are the ones. It looks like these are the ones being released. And if that's the case, I didn't realize the princess and the dragon would have been popular enough to be re-released. I think the game is popular enough to continue supporting sure. all expansions that always come out for it. But a lot of people I, who I like just, Carcassonne don't like the princess and the dragon because it's a mean version of the game. Well, that'd be perfect for you then. But actually, oh, I like I'm happy. I'm happy that Z-Man is not completely giving up all of its euros. And this obviously is a classic that got one of the ones that got me into board gaming back in the day. So I'm happy to see this happening. So are these the four expansions they're saying are are being published for the 20th edition, or are these some of them? I don't know exactly. So Inns and Cathedrals was the first expansion that came out for Carcassonne way back in the... Oh, yeah, wasn't that? Inns and Cathedrals was the first one. No, I think one. it's... Uh, Traders and Builders? Yeah, I think it's Traders and Builders, then Inns and, Inns and Cathedrals. Oh, well, then the Count, King, and Robber, the Count was like a, a small little expansion. If you remember, it had those tiles that made a big starting area. Yeah. Had basically paratrooping. So this looks like it's combining some of the purple box. And Hills and Sheep was one of the newest expansions. That's expansion yeah. nine on it, though, Z. Right. I don't know, then. Maybe this is just a sampling oh. of them reprinting all of them. All right. Yeah. I see. I did just saw that. A good, good catch. Expansion nine. So obviously they're going to be repenting at least nine expansions. Four of them are here. I think I'll wait till they come out with the 21st anniversary edition, the <laughs> Carcassonne old enough to drink edition. <laughs> It'll be you know, the sheep, if there's, the if there's sheep a on hills and sheep, drinking. but they're drunk instead. Right, and Carcassonne breweries and wineries. Come on, that'd be perfect. That's true. Perfect. <laughs> All right, then we have a new game from WizKids. I do. It's called, I think it's, is it Jinja? That would be I it. Yes, so, yeah. Nowadays, Ninja. I've been, I, I really, and I, I can't emphasize enough, that the turnaround on component quality and stuff from WizKids over the last year has been phenomenal. Like, it is at least twice as good as it used to be. Um, this one, it's hard to tell from that picture of the game. In fact, for some reason, that board looks upside down to me. Yeah, I, I couldn't resolve it in my head at first. It looks like it's It's literally... an optical illusion. It's a yeah. 3D rendering, and the optical yes. illusion makes it look like sometimes it's going... Yeah. Like, sometimes it's going like this, Yeah. And they sometimes needed a, it's going like that from the top they, down. They need a little bit of shading to make it work a little bit better for the eyes. But uh, thank you, Zev Slossinger, for... Uh, Helping to bring WizKids uh, quality up. That's just, that's great. And uh, it looks looks kind of cool. Yeah, it so Kevin neat. Crosby is the designer. It's his first design. So we don't know much more about that. It takes an hour. You're putting shrines around there. And you have secrets. I mean, it sounds like your typical, ye typical Euro game. But I don't know. I'm hoping it's good. It looks, looks fun. Yeah, I like that cover a lot. Yes, agreed on that. Now, a lot of people are excited about this next one. So we have Let's Make a Bus Route, a very popular game from Japan. And we have Let's Make a Bus Route, the dice game. But more importantly, this is being shown off at the Tokyo Game Market, which is taking place in a, this coming weekend. This is one of the few events that's happening this year. That was, I didn't know it was. I'm surprised that it is going off, actually. I'm sure it's, um, but very, it's great. very controlled, the event itself. Yeah, Tokyo I'm... Game the Tokyo game market from the, the videos and stuff I've seen of it is not necessarily about playing games. It's just about going and buying games. So that's a much more easier thing to pull off, I think. I mean, it's very similar yeah. to like New York Toy Fair, that kind of that kind of show, I believe. Not not really a convention for buying games. At least I, I don't think it is. I could be I could be wrong about that, but I, I thought it was more business to business. Z, I think you played Let's Make a Bus Route, right? I did, and I reviewed it. And I've already... And, and I've, Sashi and Sashi are fantastic. They're a great company. Uh, Sashi always contacts me when they have something new coming out, so I should be getting this in uh, two weeks or so oh, at some exciting. point. So you should be able to check out a review of it soon, folks, right here on the Dice Tower. So stay tuned for that. So Sashi always, to it. Sashi always contacts you. Does... Sashi also contact you? No. Only Sashi. Yes. <laughs> so one-way you know, relationship. 
Do you know it's only one person? <laughs> it's a one-way I... relationship. <laughs> Do you know that Sashi and Sashi is one person? Yes, I yes. was okay. kidding with you. I don't okay. understand. Oh, you want to okay. flex a little more? Go ahead. No, I'm just saying. Are you I getting a know copy of this? That. What's no, the I'm joke? Not... I'm confused. All right, anyway. Another game that just came Monocorn out of Jazz. Just chill with that shirt is what he needs to do. <laughs> I'm too, the shirt's so loud me. I have to be a little... <laughs> can, I, can I continue here? A Jazz-themed no. trick-taking game here called Taking the A Chord. I love everything about this theming. I like how it looks. I like the fact that it's a trick-taking game. This one I'm pretty pumped at. Now, this, is, this has been released. I guess it might only be in Japan right now. Yes, I reviewed um, this already too, Tom. This is a re-release. Oh my word! I'm sorry, I don't have to do the news anymore. Z, tell me what's already happened. It's turning this into is just, I, now. I don't know how much is different. I'm not. I'm not certain how much got reworked, but um, I know that it's it's been out. Again, you can check it out on the on the channel, and we'll see how much they've they've. Did you like it? Switched it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. It's it's a neat trick taking game. It's got a cool sort of circular, anything beats anything else, depending on the notes that got played. That's what the, you know, the letters obviously mean. Not, All right. not, a lot of, not a lot of games about music, really, that are good, I think. So I agree. Interesting, interesting to see this. Hopefully it's not as boring as jazz is. Next. <gasps> wow. He's just trying to make all the enemies today. Okay. <laughs> all right, see, so what's his next game like since you've played it already, <laughs> so I'm sure? Death Cube. Is a game in which, from the Kawasaki factory, in which <laughs> there's cubes, right? And they are killer. <laughs> and that's all I know, because this one I don't know anything about. Oh, okay. Well, you're trying not to be crushed by blocks in this game, apparently. Like normal, everyday life. It's a four-by-five four graded. You're covering up these different pieces. And so you are, you have 24 seconds how to put them into this grid somehow. A timed timed game. Oh boy. It seems like it seems like it's slightly timed. Like here's things yeah. you need to figure out how to do this now, and then we stop and we go on. It seems interesting. Like maybe you're trying to you you all look at the tiles and you figure out where you're gonna stand and then hope that he doesn't put the tile in that spot. I think so. Yeah. So if those are the next two shapes coming up there, and the board already looks like that, I might be like, okay, well, uh. I'm probably Wait, hang on. safe. I'm gonna stand. I'm gonna stand somewhere, and, and then you tell me where you put them, and I'll tell you if I'm safe. All right, I'm standing. Where are you putting them? All right. So let me see. They're gonna go on seven, twelve, seventeen, thirteen, fourteen. Takes the T. Okay. Yeah. And then eighteen, nineteen, twenty, fifteen, ten. Takes the L. Ah, you got me. I stood on ten. <laughs> yeah, I would have stood on an eleven because I think that's a little that's trickier to go in there. I don't think uh, eleven. Well, I actually, think eleven is safe. I think you're right. I think eleven is completely safe. I should have went with the sure thing. Oh, and uh, then you get do you get points depending on where you stand or something like sure, that. Sure, why not? <clears throat> why not? <laughs> well, that's it. No, obviously. But I like the I like the concept. I hate that cover though. It looks so. That's like, terrible. Death, yeah. death, death, death metal. All right. Now, speaking of good-looking covers here, we have Day and Night. Um, this is designed by the same person who made Crystal Clans from Plaid Hat Games. This is from Piatnik, though. And you're trying to join the crowd to score. You're going to be choosing cards simultaneous, and then you see who wins each round. It looks a little close to trick-taking. Um, I like the two-sided cards there, though. It's I like the layout of these cards a lot. They're you, I, I really like these. I think they're gorgeous cards. This is not trick taking. It's kind of trick taking. Well, I'm just saying the way it seems because it says you all simultaneously reveal cards, and uh, then you see who wins the round. And if okay. the time card shows the sun, the highest sun, blah blah blah. So that's kind of trick taking, but not quite. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I always sometimes they describe games as trick taking, even though they're simultaneous, and that just doesn't sit right with me. So. I get what you mean. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping this one's really good. I, it is very beautiful. It is lovely. All right. This next game I did not expect to be re-released. So I, well, several years ago, I reviewed Gummy, which is about uh, you have these different cards, and you're trying to draw cards and collect cards, different fruits. Well, now they change it to a much nicer-looking game here. 
Um, although it looks like the game is now for only one to two players, while the gummy went up to six players. What? That's quite the change. It is. I have to say, I really like how these cards look, though. I really like that rug motif. The, they, uh, the look patterns... like a, they look like Azul tiles or something, right? The patterns are beautiful, and it's it's kind of a funny thing the way they say in Baraka you want to collect sets of beautiful Moroccan cards, so you're collecting cards in in a card set collection card game. I don't know why it wouldn't be rugs or something like that or fabrics or something. Because they're cards, they're made of paper. That's it. Very pretty. I don't know what what it's doing other than that. All those cards have ones on them. Hmm. All right, let's jump now to Netflix here. There's an animated series on Netflix. I have not seen this one watched by my kids yet called The Dragon Prince. Oh. Although, at the rate they blow through shows, it's only a matter of time, I'm sure. So there's apparently three seasons of the show out, and now they're making a game here from Brotherwise Games. Brotherwise, of course, no stranger to making things based on IPs since they made something based on Name of the Wind and... You know, other books and things like that. Um, it's a melee melee skirmish game. <sighs> Without knowing anything about the IP, the game isn't attracting me right now. But maybe it's fun, and maybe if you're a fan of the IP, I, I don't know. You know what I mean? But that board itself yeah. doesn't look exciting. I agree. That looks drab. But I like anime, so... I don't think this is anime. I just had a long discussion with my kids over what's anime and what's not. And apparently this is animated, but not anime. Those characters are anime looking to me. Uh, I mean, maybe I'm not an expert. Be careful. I said some similar things, too. Oh, I'm in trouble now. (laughs) I'm in trouble. I called something anime, but maybe it's manga only or... No, okay. I know you that's should a stop difference. talking, actually, I think. <laughs> I know that's... I've learned my lesson. All right. Uh, drawn. So Ares is going to be publishing Ergo Ludo Editions games, which I didn't really know much about them at all, actually. Um, but man, another music-themed game here, Ensemble. Or I think it's music-themed. At least the cover looks musical. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I love this cover. This is my favorite cover of the week. Uh, another music themed game. Interesting. Beautiful cover. That's a really, really beautiful cover. Even though I feel like I've seen a cover very similar to this one, Tom, with a conductor. It's the conductor's back to us. A similar motif. This, I'm, I'm getting a feeling that I've seen this cover before somewhere. Not on this game. Is there another game like this? Is this a reprint, maybe? Mm. Man. I, this is a a party, a cooperative party game. I don't know if you've read the, some of the rest of the details. Two hey, to ten players. For a card displayed. I'm looking it up on Board Game Geek. It doesn't say that it's based on anything else. It just says 2021. Oh, man. Um, And this company, Ergo Ludo, they've... And when I look at their yeah. game, they have stuff like Gugong and the Golden Ages. But that just means they, they, they reprint. reprinted yeah. other companies' games. I don't know what their original stuff is. Nice. It looks anyway, great. They have a game out called Roxanne. Roxanne. All right. I was trying to set up Bonnet Park, but anyway. All right. Um, <laughs> Roxanne. Roxanne. All right. So I'll, Twilight I'll Imperium had a map design contest, and what they did is they made a really nice P- downloadable PDF where you can download different uh maps that that have won this contest and people made custom maps that you can play for three four five six seven eight players they're actually pretty interesting and unique i was looking at over the different maps uh so this is kind of cool i like when companies take fan base stuff like this and then put it out but they also make it available to everybody for free you know you can just download it but done in a way where everybody can get a hold of it adds more content to the game but without costing you any money at all I have a and question. You know, yeah. Because I don't know this game. Uh, do you build this layout with stuff that's in your box? Or do you like need to print this in real no, size? No, 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 no. no. This is probably this is from the box. stuff from the box. Although yeah. it also uses um, tiles from the latest expansion that came out. 
So I can make this sure. just by looking at the picture and using my tiles. I can make this, right? Yes. Okay. And but it's, it's, it's some just the special rules or whatever, you know. It's when you play Twilight Imperium, usually the, the way the rules are written, players build the map all together. You're all building the map. When I play, or when we played a, f- a few months ago with Roy and Bonacore, Roy built the map kind of as evenly as he could. Right. Uh, so which this... is the way I normally do it. But this, I wouldn't mind trying this out. And it's actually this three player yeah. version of this sounds interesting. That sounds cool. I mean, I like that. I like having a, a bank of maps. Do they not give you this in the rule book? Are there no pre built ones? No, no. They show you how to build the map, they'll show you where you put the starting things. And then the rest of it's up to players because that's, that's part of the game. Okay, okay. I, I guess I could see that, but I'm surprised they've never, in over four editions, made it easier to begin playing the first time by saying, "Look, you can build it." But the first time, well, do let this. Me, let me. I, I don't know. They may have actually have a pre-built map somewhere where you can play with it. I. That's Roy possible. Would, I'm not saying. Roy that. should know. Roy should jump in here and tell us. Roy. No, no. I don't want to. Uh, no, please. Okay. No, don't let Roy, Roy in. build You're a right. balanced map. Get out of my face. We, ah, see, there is a balance uh, pre-built right. now. There you but, go. Okay, fine. Right, now, says there's a pre-built I map. want to know why we didn't get together and create a great map when we played. You know, like, we could no, have I don't like been in this competition. We could have been. All all right, play, right. We had a four-player game. We could have been the, the guy, Matthew Pana, who won with his so map. We could have been that. Folks, thanks so much for watching. Let's keep going. Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas we're turning Hatchet from Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion from this into this in just two minutes. Hey everyone, Matt here from the Plastic Canvas and welcome to Two Minute Mini and today we are painting Hatchet from Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion. Now whenever I start to paint a mini I always like to work out what part of the mini I'm going to create as the focal point. So which part do I want someone's gaze to be drawn to when they look at the mini. And for Hatchet it was pretty obvious straight away that I wanted it to be his cloak or the main part of his cloak that you can see I'm painting at the moment that goes over his shoulders and then down his back. And what I wanted to do with this part of the cloak was to make it stand out from the other leather parts that Hatchet is wearing. And so I decided that I wanted to try and create a damaged or tarnished leather look. And when leather becomes damaged, it cracks and becomes discolored over time. And so to try and recreate that, I started with my bone color. And I just did lots of lines and dots of different sizes and lengths to try and recreate that scratched or scuffed look. And then using different colored washes, I just put them over the top blended them all together while they were wet just to create that natural sort of variation and then I redid all those lines and dots and then put the wash back over the top and just repeated that step a few times so that each layer of those lines and dots that I painted showed through the wash to different degrees because some of them had three layers of wash over the top others only had one and so it just sort of created that aged, damaged look as though Hatchet has been out adventuring and over time this part of his cloak has taken damage but to an inconsistent amount. And what I found to be really, really important when doing this technique is that every new layer of those lines and dots to create those scratch and scuff marks covers a smaller amount of surface area than the previous layer so that by the time you're done all of those different layers of those scratch and scuff marks are still showing through regardless of how many layers of wash have gone over the top and that really helps to create that aged look. But if you would like to see the full version of this video where I go through all of this in greater detail, you can head over to my channel, The Plastic Canvas, and I hope you enjoy your breakfast. Howdy folks, welcome to By The Numbers. My name is Hunter Thomason from The Family Showdown. On this episode of By The Numbers, we're continuing my Through The Year series, where I look at the best game on Board Game Geek by year, started in 1970, this time 2010. Taking a look at the top five from 2010, we see the number one game is Seven Wonders, coming in at number 61. Seven Wonders at the time was a very innovative game with its card drafting mechanism. I'm sorry, Seven Wonders is not innovative. The drafting mechanic has been done before, which means it's 
not innovative. As I was saying, Seven Wonders, not innovative, is a card drafting civilization game that plays up to seven players. Take a look at the ratings, almost 85,000 of them. We see mostly eights for overall rating of 7.7. .7. Take a look at the weight, it comes in at a 2.33, which might seem a little low for a civilization game, but it plays in only about 30 minutes. Seven Wonders is yet another game I have in my collection, which is becoming more common as we get into the more modern years and the through the year series. In fact, there is a brand new edition, that, speaking of modern, that came out last year, 2020, and I would compare the two, but Mr. Garcia did an amazing comparison of those two versions, the original edition and the second edition. You can go check that out. First edition or second edition, Seven Wonders is still an awesome game. And all kidding aside, I love you, Sam. See you next time. Hey, I'm Grant with Grant's Game Rex. And today I want to recommend the little family game, Abandon All Artichokes. I am not joking or exaggerating when I say that artichokes are my least favorite food of all time, okay? I hate them so much. My mom used to make me eat them when I was a kid and I just spent the whole night gagging and dry heaving because I hated them so much. Now, as an adult, I will go into grocery stores and punch artichokes. That's not a joke. I have literally punched artichokes in grocery stores, that's how much I hate them. And finally, finally there is a game that understands my pain. Finally there is a game that encourages people to abandon those dumb artichokes. Don't eat them, abandon them. Abandon all artichokes. Abandon all artichokes is a deck building game. You will start the game with five gross, gross artichoke cards in your hand and five more in your own draw pile. On your turn, you will be picking up a card from the garden row. These cards will either help you compost and get rid of artichoke cards, give them to other players, or go into your own discard pile. If at any point you draw five cards from your own draw pile and none of them are artichokes, you win the game because artichokes are evil and you don't want them. This game is light, it's fun, it's easy to teach, it's small so you can take it with you wherever you go. If you like the game Sushi Go, then I think you'll really like this game. It's in the same world as that. Side note, I really hope to meet the designer of this game one day because I want to know if they hate artichokes as much as I do. Punch him. Hey everybody, welcome back to 20 Questions. So we're going to be playing a little bit of a different variant today of this game. Uh, these guys are going to be going back and forth, asking me questions. They can take them from the chat, they can come up with them themselves, however you want to. And you can ask me anything, it does not have to be only a yes or no question. I'm going to answer that question about a board game truthfully. And then it'll go to the other player. But on your turn, obviously except for the very first person, you can either ask a question, or you can try to guess what the game is. If you say, okay, I want to guess, I think I know what this is, then you will both guess. If you're the one who triggered the guessing, you, if you're right, you get two points. If you're wrong, you lose one for being so braggadocious. And the other person the other person's going to get a point for being right. They, they lose nothing if they're wrong, okay? If you get one... Even if you, you know, if you guess and we're done, then we move on to, to another game. Um, and uh, that's it. We're going to get 20 questions. You can split that among, I don't know how many games. It depends how many games you guys go through, but I've got plenty of them. So that's going to be it. Again, you got to be careful. If you ask something really, really juicy, the other guy is next to possibly trigger guessing and possibly make two points to your one. So here we go. I've got these games open up in front of me on BGG, and we're going to flip a coin to see who goes first. I got the, the spooky coin of spookiness here. One side says yes, the other side says no. 
Bonacor, would you like your side to be the yes or the no side? I am the most positive person, so I am obviously a yes. And Tom would get the no, okay. Because he is a very negative man. Yes! Okay. So I have to guess, I have to ask you a question. That's right. Anything. You can ask whatever you want. Anything you want. Do you, there's, do you, no, there's no clarifying anything beforehand? What do you mean? Yeah, I don't know. Category, I don't know anything. It's a, it's a game. It's a board game title. It's definitely it. a board game. I am not trying to be tricky with these. These are yeah. popular games. I am not going for obscure things. Okay. Yeah. How much do you like this this shirt I'm wearing? No, no, that's not my question. But I know you like it, so all right. I mean, um, are you stealing my jokes off air? Come on now. Yeah, really. Come on. I get st- also that shirt is terrible. <laughs> it's a beautiful. It's a gorgeous. I shirt. actually really like the shirt. Thank you. So of course you do. That should tell you something, Bonacor. <laughs> I know. I'll never wear it again now. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. All right. All right. All right. Let's right, get go. this. What do you got? Let's get this show on the road here. Okay. Would you consider it a Euro game? Uh, yeah. That's the first question. I want another answer now. I keep going, right? I got another question. Yeah, you're done. You either guess uh, and right. a game or you ask a question. Tom, go. Was the, or is the is one of the at least one of the designers? If there's doesn't matter. Is one of the designers, even if it's only one, a woman? No. Okay. Was the game released in the last? You can just ask me when it came out. I mean, you guys. Are oh. Yeah. Yes or no <laughs> question. Yeah, but that might be too easy for Tom. That's true. That's in what true. year was the game released? I know. I'm thinking yes, no. That's the. the yeah, what, in what year was the game cautious, released? I think. What year in did what? it come out? Yes. 2004. Okay, that's a that's huge. I, I'm not looking. Okay, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna look into the. Ch- you can look at the chat if they give you an idea. That's okay. Don't don't. Tom doesn't look. Go say something, Tom. Help me, guys. Help me. Um, I just don't want Tom to wait to fish answers. Let's go, Tom. I'm See. debating if I want to guess the game. Oh, you All suck. Right. Do you really? He's fishing for answers from the yeah. chat. No, I'm not even looking at the answers here. <laughs> um, Z, how many colors are in the game? How many colors? What kind of question what does that is that mean? You said I could ask anything! The box yes. art? What does it how mean? How many player colors are in the game? How's that? Oh, how player colors. Uh, well. How many plays does it go up to? Same, same it answer. It plays five players at most, so five, Tom. Okay. Dumbest question I've ever heard in my life. Absolutely dumb. Okay, Steven, hit it. Oh, wait, that was... uh, We're now four <laughs> questions down. You've each asked two. Uh, okay, I'm going to... Uh, is, all right, I'll take a guess. You're ready to guess? Lahav. Wait, wait, no, this is not how that works. <laughs> I already wrote mine down, Z, if it helps. Yeah. You're, yeah, all right. So You're guessing, then you both guess, Steven. Right. Okay, you're saying La Havre. Tom, what are you saying? I said Ticket to Ride. Yes, it's Ticket to Ride. Unbelievable. So, How Tom, is my question bad, Mr. Bonacore? I found out it was a five-player game. Just ask, if it's a, ask how many players it plays up to. That's the way he asked that question. How many Did players? you get it right? So, Did you get it right? I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tom's got one point. Steven has negative one. All right. So I would have got more points if I had been the one to call it. Correct. You got two if you're right. Mr. Boniker, don't ask the year of the game again. Why? Because I know that better than you do. Oh, you definitely know that better than me. You knew All right. You, you guys have asked, uh, I believe, four questions. You, you should ask it then. And now uh, it's back to Tom. <laughs> this is a brand new game. You, you should. Brand new game. Tom, go. All right, how many how many words are in the title? Oh, my two. Gosh. Oh, all right, you're five questions in. Steven, uh, what year you said? I did not. <laughs> um, would um, is the game based on a fantasy theme? Uh, yeah.
As far as you know, can I see the game right now? What? What? Wait, what does that mean? I don't think so, Tom. What, like, I mean, like, like behind him or something? Can you see the game right now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. I don't have to explain myself to you. Oh, you should do. Uh, geez, Tom. Uh, yeah, you can see it. Okay. All right, I'm going to guess. <laughs> okay. I'm going to pick one guess. of those. No, I, the funny thing is I had I had it in my mind anyway, and then I guess you kind of confirmed it. Blood Rage. Oh, sorry. You're supposed to. Pick you that. stop. You don't have to play the game. Oh, well, go that. ahead. Pick Get your shirt, you loud man. <laughs> I also guessed Blood Rage. All right, Tom, you got another point, and Steven has two points, which means now your totals, your running totals are two for Tom, one for you, Steven. I actually had, I mean, that was, even when I said, is it fantasy, I had Blood Rage in my head. All right. That was uh, your you triggering. Fantasy, but all right. You, yeah, it's just fantasy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Close to the mytho- mythological. All right, Tom, book. back to you. Go. It's fantasy. There's magic in it. All right. Um, Brand new game. <laughs> Mike Delisio said, what is the name of the game? <laughs> he put that in the chat. <laughs> Ask that question. Um, is won't. there a Y? The letter Y, is it in this name of the game? No. All right, you guys have gone through eight questions. Um, oh, I'm going to guess it. Just shout it out now. Pe- people are telling me how much they like my shirt. And the, thank you, everybody. Like my shirt. I like it, too. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> you know, I can see the chat, too. There's not, like, this massive swell of support for your shirt. <laughs> Absolutely there is. <laughs> One person said it. Uh, absolutely is massive swell of support for this beautiful shirt that i literally just got thank you everybody thank you um <laughs> what is this everybody <laughs> uh steven to your knowledge yeah okay would it be to your knowledge would this be a game that would be something that i would like to play knowing my style of games with something that i would i would seek out to make sure that i played this game uh yeah that does kind of help Tom too, but because he knows what I like. But you know what? Whatever, whatever. Z, what's your number rating for this game? Eight. Okay. All right, you guys have asked. You've asked half your questions at this point. Um. Again, you can take questions from the chat or answers if they if you think they know something. Is the um, does the does the theme have um, some scientific impact? Is it like does it have science as part of its? Um, why are you laughing? I, just, I like the way you're asking this. Yeah, yeah. Does it does science no. take? No. All right. Back to you, Tom. So you guys know so far what? No why, no science. Bonacore would play it. What else? Do we uh, tell me one of the publishers. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Tell you one of the publishers? Yeah, but make, it the, make it the good one. Like, make it less. <laughs> no, it's not your question. <laughs> Don't make it like the guy who did it in, like, in, like, Hungarian. <laughs> One of the publishers, Tom. Hansim Gluck. Thank you. Oh, that. It's the first one that showed up, so. Wow. Oh, uh, wow. That's a tough. Uh, 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 All right. You what, guys have... year? what year? I'm going with what year? You're going with what year did it come out? Yes. 2000. I'm guessing. I'm guessing. <laughs> okay, write it down. Got it. Okay. Go ahead, Tom. Carcassonne. Carcassonne. That is correct, of course. Oh, I- two for Tom, one for Bonacore, bringing your total to two, bringing Tom's total to four. 
I I should have made the guess. I mean, it was in my head, but I wanted to go with a little more info. Like I said, 2000. Well, you're definitely mind. behind now, so you're going to have to be the one to trigger the guessing, ideally, Bonacore, if you want to try to catch up. What's the score? The score is four for Tom, two for you. <clears throat> All right. All right, it comes back to you, Stephen, because uh, Tom just guessed. And you have a brand new game, and you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven questions, guys. And then we are done. You will have one free final guess after that for whatever we're working on. Would you consider the box cover to be good art, Z? Well done artwork. Yes. Yeah. All right. Six questions. Uh, Z, is is there spaghetti in the game? What? No. Thank what? You. What? As far as I know. <clears throat> All right. Uh, chat, please help me. Chat, please help. Um, Tom, Tom's going to game this bad boy, man. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> yes, he is. Tom's going to be a jerk. <laughs> I can tell you, know, I... <laughs> What color are the shoes that I'm wearing right now? You're not going to try to help yourself? Okay. I mean, uh, <laughs> all right, fine. You'll lose if you don't get it. You're not giving, you're not coming up with anything either. So I, I asked can, a question that to. narrowed out four games. Oh, did not. No, four games of the 80,000 in Morgan Geek. Very good. Um, let's go with... Um, Let's go with number of players. Number of players? You want the range of players? The range. Let's go with range of players. Yeah, range of players. Okay, it's one to four players. All right, I'll ask a more helpful question. All I, right, I you got wanna, four questions. I don't want to be cheesy. What do you got, Tom? Who's, you who's the team. artist or one of the artists? Oh. The right. artist or – I'm going off of BGG. Uh, not available. Ooh. The artist is not available. Ooh. It says N-A, yeah, for not available. I assume it's a bunch of people, though, Tom. That's very odd. Um, primary publisher, or first publisher on your list. Fantasy Flight Games. Whoa! Whoa! All right, that so is two completely questions left. out of left field for me. Two questions left. Well, wow. I guess that, that takes off what I was going to ask. I was going to ask, is it, is it for the most part a card game? Do you want to ask that? Yeah, that, 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 that's my question. Is it a card game, essentially? Yes. Okay, Stephen, you have one final, final question here. Um, well, it, doesn't this have to be a guess? It does not, because you'll both get a guess. We'll both guess, and we'll both have the same. All right. Um, but you could do a guess now, if you want to, and then you'll both get a guess, unless somebody's right, and we move on to the next game. And then we just guess a random game. <laughs> you do, yes. You might All right, be I'll, right. I guess I'll, I'll guess, I guess. I guess I'll guess. They put out a lot of card games. Yeah, I know. I'm guessing. Hang on, I'm okay, thinking. you're both guessing? Uh, Fine. Uh, uh, okay, write it down. Uh, this is a tough one. I'm ready. All right. Let's hear it, guys. Tom, what do you got? Marvel Champions. I got Lord of the correct. Rings. Look, he's correct? Yeah, he's right. Uh, so he gets I five. We picked one. <laughs> and Steven, what did you guess? Lord of the Rings. Living card game. It is not that. So it's one point. Uh, I ran minus one, for you, so it brings one down to one. He even so, he even picks randomly and he and he gets it. You're he didn't pick randomly. Pretty random. And he's no. How many? This next one's random. Now it's the end of the game. So you guys each now pick the next one. I'm looking at. I have my game ready. <laughs> All right, Steven. So, here we go. And this one's double, no matter what. Steven, if you get this right, I cede the game to you. <laughs> No, no question. Because if you're that, if you could pull that off, that we also are going to go to the uh, Mikasuki later on today. That's right. And in <laughs> fact, I'm going to go ahead and take a picture of what it is right here. 
You're taking so a picture of the no game. messing around. Oh, I, I have it on not, my screen. I have it on my not, screen. Here we go. You would not cheat. Who go? Who, who guesses first? Tom does, I think. No. I'll you go guys first. Write it fine. down. Okay. No, no, no. Are we okay, just Tom, guessing the game? Let's hear. I'm not gonna say yes or no till I hear both. So, Tom, what are you, what are you guessing? Oh, we have, what? I haven't get. I haven't put a just put any game down. Well, oh, yeah, on. the next on, one on my on. list here. What's it gonna be? Uh. <laughs> Uh, all right. Pick Go. something less dumb. No, not that. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. okay. Are we uh, ready? Yeah. Yes. I'm picking Monopoly. Okay, Steven. Good time. Guys, come on. It was seven wonders. <laughs> oh. I should have had it. It was on the tip of my tongue. No, I was um, going to, I was, I almost wrote chess because I thought you might. Go all the way back and do something like that. I already had these lined up, so, you know. All right, anyway, Tom, you're going to get five points. Steven has one. Woo! And that's 20 questions beta. We'll keep working on it. We'll work on that one. All right, let's keep going with some contributors, folks. Hi, I'm Tim. I'm Lizzie. And we are To Play or Not To Play, a show about board games for two players. Whose tastes may differ. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome back to our top ten of games we like to play together. Ooh. What number are we at now? We're at number seven, seven. today, yes. Seven. And number seven is Ooh. Thieves of Tomb Raiders. Yes. We are Indiana jones it up. Well, we are, actually. <laughs> Indiana Jones in a box, some might say. Indiana Jones in a box. <laughs> two to four player game. We obviously beat three players, too. Yep. It's a quick game, 30 minutes. Uh, this is the card game version of Thieves, isn't it? Yeah, there is a bigger version where there's, there's, there's sort of bags that you plunge mm. your hand into and stuff. Good good fun. But this yep. is slightly sort of more concise and it's a better game, we think. So yeah. we play this one more often. So. Um, so basically, it's uh, it's a game where you go off on digs to yeah. ancient sites, Greece, Egypt, Mesopotamia, that mm -hmm. kind of place, and um, you dig for treasure. That's pretty much it. And you you earn the right to dig by gaining knowledge, and the knowledge are just cards that you collect you in a kind of set collection style. Um, so you collect up enough cards, go on a dig. Hopefully, you'll find a load of treasure. Sometimes you just dig up dirt, yeah, you? So, you know. uh, and the way that the game is controlled is by a time track around yeah, the outside of the board. Yeah, you've got to spend time. Yeah, you? it's a really good yeah. idea. So basically, the player at the back always goes first, uh, and they might overtake the next player, and mm. they spend time. So they might spend it's two really or three good. weeks. Really clever little. Yeah. Um, if you go a long way in advance, week wise, that kind of sends mm. you a lot of sort of time in your dig site but the other person then has to catch up and they've got maybe two or three goes to mm. catch you up because they can spend a couple of smaller yeah, shorter digs and stuff yeah so really really good, really good really little... nice illustrations as well like a little bit yeah little it's a smashing little game yeah. yeah so we recommend this as well as our number seven, seven. thieves of tomb raiders <laughs> can't wait to tell you the next one um check out our channel for full reviews on these games and uh, other top tens yeah cheers guys thanks very much see you on the next one Hey there, everyone. It's Jen, the board game librarian, flipping some pages and pushing some cubes. I'm solo today. No, Matt. I'm sorry, folks. With my segment from the page to the table. This week, I'm looking at an almost brand new book, and that is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. Really awesome concept in this book, uh, where our main character, Addie LaRue, uh, it's 1714, and she essentially makes a deal with the devil. She wants to be free. She does not want to be stuck in this marriage that she's been arranged to have, and the devil grants her her freedom. But at that price, she uh, is... She has got wants to be free she does not want to be stuck in this marriage that she's been arranged to have and the devil grants her her freedom but at that price she uh is lives an invisible life she gets to do all these things she does not die but once she leaves the room no one remembers her so we have a an epic story of time um, of finding love who you are and i thought that would be excellent to go with Rococo. I've been waiting for a while to have a book to pair with this. So we're in the Rococo period here. This is so exciting. Um, but Addie does spend time in um, 
some of the kings and queens palaces of France. They do show up in here. Um, and Rococo is just one of the best games that we have in our collection. It was supposed to be my pretty dress game. <laughs> I'm looking over there at my husband. Um, haven't played the deluxe edition. We do still like this one a lot. Um, been a game of making dresses and coats. We don't have the jewelry expansion um, and selecting your best one for the fireworks show at the end. Eagle Griffin production. Um, I'd highly recommend picking out both. Great book, even better audiobook, and a great game as well. That's it for breakfast this week. We'll see you later. Hi, it's Tarrant. And it's Stella from Liverpool University and the Dust Tower. Today we have a, a slightly interesting topic about board game influence you in the real life. Well, doesn't mean that board game is not real. Yeah, and for me, I was going to talk about this game here, the uh, Super Skill Pinball 4K. It was the pinball theme Roll and Write, which came out last year. And one of the, you know, I enjoyed playing this uh, Roll and Write game and we have introduced a few other people. But what I really found interesting out of this was that now all of a sudden I understand actual pinball machines a lot better. And pinball, it was sort of dying when I was growing up and it was just always for me this big flashing thing where you would lose the ball almost instantly and it would be very frustrating. And lose your money. Yeah, but since having played this I've seen a number of pinball machines in public places and I've played them and I can actually now kind of understand what's going on. I can see how to get like alley points and where drop targets are and it's just given me an appreciation for actual pinball which I never had before having played this game. That is absolutely true although I'm not really good at pinball I kept losing the ball but I saw you playing it I'm like oh yeah this is actually here you do this and you do this you hit it like how do you know all this? Like, oh, because I'm used to playing this game. That is very interesting. So let us know if you have anything like that, even with this pinball game or other things. Let us know in the comment sections. And we are Meeple University and on the Dice Tower on YouTube. See you next time. All righty. Well, there's another board game breakfast. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you to all the contributors. Folks, if you want to... Uh, back the Dice Tower, but you missed our Kickstarter. You can back it now on GameFound. Just go to DiceTowerKickstarter.com, uh, and it will take you right to the page if you want to do that. Uh, and for all those you did, thank you. We're getting all the stuff together. Um, in fact, you know, we've been working on that all this week, You know, getting the things together. I, the puzzle is being currently put together by my wife to test it out. Uh, so it, it's it's a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> um, How many pieces is that, Tom? It's a thousand, but the problem is, is like I thought, well, wow, there's all these different dice characters. It'd be easy, sure, but their sure. eyes all look the same. <laughs> so like I have an eye, I'm like, I don't know whose eye this is. Nice. So, cool. Either way, I think it'll be cool when it's done. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mr. Bonico, for coming on our show. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. And I'm Stephen Bonico. Roxanne! You don't have to put out the red light. Oh. Yeah.